Hi all, Bones here from Osby SA Bantams and welcome back to the workshop. As you can see, we're into winter, it's a little bit cool. In this episode there will be, uh, we're going to have another go at casting a head and I'll take you all through that, plus a little bit of machining, plus a bit of a workshop update. So stick around, have a look. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just preparing some green sand for the pouring cup to do the casting. So we've actually welded up uh, this. So I will put green sand in that packet in and then do carve out my pouring cup and I'll show you what we end up with in just a minute. So that's our pouring cup done. You can see we've got a little new wall in there. It's hard, a little bit hard to get the idea of the depth of the cup but made that pretty deep so I'll take a fair bit of metal that long way down and hopefully we'll be able to get a we'll be able to get a fair bit in there and get a decent head pressure on it so so here's our pattern uh, and as you can see it's pink so um, someone mentioned uh, Kelly Caulfield mentioned about putting acrylic paint in with your slurry and someone else mentioned that as well but said do it a different colour to your foam so you can see where you're painted. Really good advice. So putting that acrylic paint in the slurry made a huge difference. It just made the whole mixture creamier. Um, it still put a little bit of detergent on your foam, foam pattern. Uh, and it just laid on so nicely. It really did. So this has been drying out for a few days. We've got our drum. We're getting ready to, to set it in the sand. And um, we'll move closer to getting a pour in. There is my grandson Levi, wave man. So what he's been giving me a hand to do is set up our pattern in the sand. You can see down there the end of the sprue, foam sprue, and that's our cup. Our cup has been embedded down into the sand. And whilst I've got one of those little air vibrators, I'll be honest with you, they're not much chop. You probably need about four of them around here to be really effective. And I've just been laying my reciprocating saw across the top of this and it does a fantastic job. So if you've got one, if you've got one of those and you're thinking about getting one of those, don't. Even though, you know, they don't cost much on Evil Bay. So um, also don't adjust your sound. If it sounds static, it's because it's raining on the roof. Of course it is, because you want to do a cast. So that's our, that's our pattern all set. Uh, and it's time to fire the furnace up. Isn't it, little man? Yep. As long as we don't rain, it doesn't rain too much. This is where we're undercover. So I've got everything set up. Obviously, gas bottle over there feeding for the furnace. Our pourer, the mould. Tongs over there, and over, the, over there, you can just see the black box, that's a thermocouple. So we've actually got our hands on a thermocouple to measure the measure the temperature of our material to make sure it's it's uh, all okay. A couple of bits on top of there, just preheating before they go in the crucible as well. I 
like the head on the outside there. Hey? I couldn't see that pouring out there. Yeah, it's not much though. And it did stop. So as you saw, we had a bit of a spill out the side, but um, it took nearly the whole crucible, so that's obviously a good sign. But we're gonna find out in about half an hour's time whether it worked or not, so we'll see what happens. Okay, moment of truth has arrived. We'll tip it out and we'll see how we go. So fingers crossed. No, nah, didn't fill the ends of the pins. God, it was close too. So close. Just these fins here, over this side, and one over there didn't fill properly. Oh well, we're getting closer. Okay, we got pretty close. Too close, buddy. Okay, we got pretty close. We still haven't got a, a good fill here, but we have we have down here. Um, I know my metal temp's right because I measured it. It was about 750 when we poured. Um, yeah, I did have it set on an angle as well, but I think I'll change this design to have. Um, the gates going in here on either side so I'll have more of a spread rather than a single one. I did actually have a pour a week or so ago splitting it but the actual um, sprue was too too thin and it, it chilled down and it just wouldn't flow properly. So, And the other thing is the pattern's just a fraction thick or reduce the reduce the um, thickness of the pattern but we're getting close I'm not I'm not uh certainly not been out of shape we're pretty close but the pattern itself is a lot thicker in the in the fin so we had we had pretty good flows just to, just chilled down and got a bit cold I think didn't quite feel could have been a breakdown in the refractory as well I'm not 100% sure to be honest but anyway we'll have another go see how we go Okay, um, I'll just give you a little demo on what we're actually doing on the, the old turret lathe. So, if you, we'll bring you over here for a sec, and I'll just grab the camera off Levi. What we're actually doing is, uh, these are these are Bantam, the spring, spring cup plate. So your springs sit in a cup that goes in these holes. That's an original one, with only six holes, but these, these are an eight spring clutch plate. So we've had these laser cut. I've just machined the, the shoulder where the um, snap ring retains it. And here, uh, the little buttons, which uh, same same as this, but they just go in there and they'll get TIG welded in there. This one's uh, only been done, like one side, it'll get turned around and then um, we'll chamfer that little that little hole there and and put an M4 thread in it. So over, over here, because I don't have one of these things, a collet to hold something that small, I've made up a, um, a split collet and that split collet will drop in there. Then that'll fit, that'll fit in there. So when we go to turn it around, uh, we'll have the ability to hold it, chamfer it, drill and tap it. And the beauty of that is that that can all be done in one process at a lower speed. So that's really handy. But we'll get, 
I'll hand the camera over to little man here who's got his safety glasses on, good mate. And we'll go for a run on the way. I'm just setting the speed because I haven't fired it up today. So just dialing up the speed. Okay. So we need to that lemon. We need to bring our bar stock out. And we're gonna set it at the right length. Lock it to a center drill. Enough, we'll go back. Now we're gonna drill the the tapping drill size for the M4 thread up the middle. That drill looks like it needs a sharpening. This is a chamfering tool. Out of the way. Now we're going to turn the diameter on it. A little diameter. Out. Share for both sides. Tool changeover. Sliding off tool goes in. Now we're going to put a chamfer on the back where I'm going to part it off. Come back in against the stock, and now we'll part it off. And that's dropped off all the way down the bottom, which is going to be a bit of a bugger to find in the coolant. Oh, here it is. <coughs> so that's our little button that we've got to make. Come in, my little man. So I've got, me sh got the shed helper here, so... Uh, I'll also do a quick walk around the workshop and I'll show you what we're up to. So, my apologies for going handheld. I'm on bike over there without the engine in it because the engine's up there. We've just taken the engine out so we had a couple of engine rebuilds that I really wanted to run in. So, I dropped into, into my bike and went for a bit of a bit of a ride and they both came up good had a customer in yesterday Tomo hopefully you enjoy your engine it was great having a chat to you mate I know you watch the channel 523 carby for a 150 bantam uh, customer was chasing one so we don't have complete carby so I've had to build that one up in bits it's got new slide and needle and a few other odds and sods in it it's all been ultrasonically cleaned and that's all ready to go out to the customer uh, over here uh, Levi do you want to open the box so arriving yesterday uh, brand new alloy rims for our Celix Beach race bikes so another box of them there these are the rears the fronts are in in there so very happy with very happy with that and I think that's sort of it in the workshop at this stage, but and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, as you saw, not a hundred percent success rate with the head. However, I'm pretty happy. So there's a few things I'm going to change on it. One is that the actual base of the head uh, from the pattern is pretty thick, so I want to reduce 
that thickness uh, so it doesn't take up that volume of metal. Um, the other thing is I'll change my gating system, have a have a split split gate in the in the in the back of it to try and get the metal in a bit a bit quicker. It, to me, it looks like that when you saw the fins, it's, it's just getting a bit cold and it's not filling properly. So, but everything else I think worked really well. The refractory worked really well. So we're getting closer. Um, there's a few, people have commented and said, why don't you machine it out a billet and everything like that? Well, there's a few things. I want to actually learn how to do this, this process. I want to hone my skills. I want to have a go at it, keep going at it. I'm sure I'll get there in the end. I mean, it's a pretty complex thing that I'm trying to do, but you know, big deal. So we'll keep persisting with that. Um, to all those people that provide really positive and constructive comments, I really thank, thank you very much. So there's little snippets of information I've been taking from people to help me out. So it's been really good. Uh, to all my subscribers, uh, thank you very much for your ongoing support. It's really, really appreciated. So this will be my last video for close to two months. So I'm about to head off to Europe and the UK uh, on a holiday. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Pity it didn't come out as a 100% success, but we're getting closer and I'm, I'm really happy actually. So it's all a learning process and that's the whole reason I started this as a, as a learning process to hone skills and get, get new skills to be able to do things. So, um, so from me, in the Oz Bantams workshop, I'll see you probably in a couple of months, I'd reckon. Uh, whilst in my absence, there's a, and if you're interested, there's a few other channels that you, you know, go off, if you haven't subscribed to them or looked at them, go and have a look. Um, Dean Bristow at Retro Mechanica, uh, Carl Wilson at Carl Wilson Engineering, uh, Chris at the Hagen Factory, Kelly Caulfield, Old Foundryman, if you haven't seen any of those clips or anything on YouTube, go and, go and have a look because they're all really interesting and, and I watch them anyway. So from Bones at Oz BSA Bantams, I'll see you later. I'm off on holidays.